Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Scott. Uh, today I'm not going to do a request here. I'm going to do something of my own idea that might be useful for many, I think. It's on uh, English for cooking. I want to put uh, 10 sentences together um, based on in the kitchen. I shouldn't say cooking only. English for in the kitchen. So let me give you the uh, sentences uh, one by one and also explain anything uh, that I need to explain. So the first one is, uh, I made breakfast, I made lunch, I made dinner. That's easy enough. Now this one, the only caution here is that sometimes students may uh, put an article up uh, in front of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So just be careful the article a uh, or the is not necessary. So just, I made lunch, I made breakfast, I made dinner. I was out of order there, but you got the idea, okay? Now, I, I use make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because they're good uh, for anything that you're making in the kitchen. So, uh, making lunch, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Now, generally in English, we don't usually say cook breakfast or cook lunch. Usually it's going to be make breakfast and make lunch, but often cases it's going to be um, cook dinner. Um, another word that's also used for um, uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner is also the word fix, which you may find quite uh, unusual. Fix means the repair. Why are you repairing breakfast, lunch, or dinner? But that fix means the make and prepare. So I fix lunch, I fix dinner. I cook dinner two, sometimes three days a week. I make breakfast every day. That's not true. I'm just using these as an examples. Okay, let me go on to this number two next, which is, um, no, number three, because I cook dinner two or three days a week was actually number two. So number three is, have you ever baked cookies? Now I'm using bake uh, in the oven. Baking cookies, baking bread, baking a cake, baking a pie. So have you ever baked cookies? That's baking in the oven. That brings me to number four. I love the smell of fish frying. I love the smell of fish frying. And obviously in the frying pan. Now I think I mentioned this in, in an earlier episode. Be careful, I in my, my wasa ego. Not fry pan, but fry ing pan, I-N-G. Make sure you say it correctly, frying pan. So I love the smell of fish frying, which is often done in a frying pan. And on to uh, number five, uh, we can say that yakitori is uh, grilled chicken on skewers. So I'm given the word here for grilled, because yakitori is uh, chicken. Sometimes where people are going to say with um, yakitori how to translate it or so. So just a simple idea would be grilled chicken on a skewer. That small stick, that's a skewer, a smaller one. The bigger one, maybe you're familiar with a shish kebab, but anyways, a skewer for yakitori. So grilled chicken on a skewer, we'll say is yakitori. And number six, uh, how many minutes should I boil the pasta? Boil, it's in the water, it's on the stove, it's heating up, it's bubbling, that's the boil. So boil pasta in that case. So how many minutes should I boil the pasta? And I'm gonna go out of the, I'm gonna go away from the stove and oven and I'm gonna to go to a dish, something completely different, but it's in the kitchen still. Now you have your refrigerator. Now your refrigerator also prob not all, not probably, definitely has a freezer. So where you keep the milk and the juice and the eggs will be in the refrigerator. And when you want to freeze something like ice cream, that's gonna be in the freezer. So when you take something out of the freezer because you're going to cook it that evening, like beef or chicken, fish or so, that is to thaw. Now let me get to the sentence first, and I wanna to get to the pronunciation. So take the chicken out of the freezer to thaw, okay? Now it's similar to the word in past tense for C is saw, but that's with an S, and thaw is with a T and H. So be careful on the pronunciation, make the TH sound, it's a soft TH sound. Thaw, thaw. So take the chicken out of the freezer to thaw. And often we'll do it in a two part verb, phrasal verb, thaw out. So past tense, I thawed out the pork for dinner. Okay, thaw, T-H-A-W. That obviously is something that you want to do. Now sometimes things thaw, so to say, I'm using thaw in, in, a, in a different way here. I don't mean to use the word thaw here, I mean to use the word melt, and that's unintentional. So let me give you a sentence here. 
So I left the ice cream out and it melted. That was not planned. The thong out the uh, chicken or beef, that was planned. But the ice cream, I forgot to put it back in the freezer, so it melted. So an intentional one would be thaw out the meat. And an unintentional one, or because it's in the hot sun, would be melt, like butter or ice cream. That's not so good. You lose your ice cream that way. Difficult to refreeze it. Okay, now it's going to bring me to number nine. Um, and this time I'm going to um, dish washing. So do you wash the dishes yourself or do you use a dishwasher? A dishwasher. Dishwasher is a machine. It could be a big machine. It could also be a tabletop or countertop machine as well. Uh, that's called a dishwasher. So do you wash the dishes by yourself or do you use a dishwasher? Dishwasher only. You don't need to put the word machine in there at all. Just a dishwasher. I have a dishwasher. It's understood that way. Okay, everybody. I got one more. It's, an, it's a, not an idiom in this case. It's a proverb. And it also contains something like soup. But the word is broth. So the English proverb here is, too many cooks spoil the broth. Again, I have the TH there on that broth. So make sure it's the same as that thaw. It's a soft TH. So broth. Uh, tongue between, uh, between the upper teeth and lower teeth. Had that TH lesson before. Please check back on it. So too many cooks spoil the broth, which means that if you have too many people doing something, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Broth is like a soup, but not a soup. It's kind of the liquid part. Japanese dashi is broth. And spoil means it goes bad. For example, the rain spoiled our picnic. So too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the broth. You can't make it so well. It doesn't come out the way you had hoped because there are too many cooks in the kitchen. There is a, a Japanese version of this uh, proverb as well, but it, it's related to a boatman and a mountain. Check down the dictionary if you're not sure what I mean. So too many cooks spoil the broth. I want to put in a proverb at the end. Hope you enjoyed the uh, English in the kitchen. And if you have any uh, requests or ideas of your own, feel free to let us know. We'd appreciate hearing from you. In the meantime, everyone, keep up the great work with your studies, uh, and we'll be back here again soon. Don't forget to like and also subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.